Hallelujah. Thank God for that. that. That was a beautiful song. I'm so satisfied. So satisfied. You satisfied today? You ought to be. If you was able to walk through that door, you ought to be satisfied. So many people would have loved just the privilege of walking, talking, and being able to go to the house of the Lord today. So we, we are thankful today that the Lord has brought us to this point. Today is the first of a new quarter. Amen. New month. Amen. We want to thank God for that. And as we try to do at the first of the quarter, we have communion. So thank God for another opportunity to talk about the, the, the transforming sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, you know, it's been quite a shift in how we did do things and how we had to do things once the pandemic hit. And uh, we had various mechanisms and various ideas as to how we could keep things going, you know. Uh, amen. And I know at my last church, we had two outdoor services. Amen. In the, in the, we had in the ball field and, and people really enjoyed that. Being out there, had the seating out there and all that. They just had a ball. But we did whatever we had to do. But most of the time, most of doing the, most of that time, uh, we, ha we always had a, a group that stayed home, uh, you know, and, and watched the services who came in, but when we had those outdoor services, they, everybody came. They felt comfortable being outside. So just saying God has been able to keep us moving forward, even during this pandemic. So, so this is another opportunity to talk about the goodness of God and the grace of God and the, the healing of God. And, uh, and we want to talk a little bit about that as we get to our message before we go into our partaking of communion. Um, just want to say this is a this is a, a great, great reminder that we normally try to do quarterly, but you can do it more often than that. But the reminder is it continue to cement in your mind just what Jesus did for you. Amen. We talk about that. We talk about that. So our text this morning is found in the book of John, St. John. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And we're looking at verses, beginning with verse 19. As we talk about the subject, look upon Jesus. Look upon Jesus. Pray with me before we read the word. Father, speak now as we cement, focus our thoughts upon you and your holy word. We, Lord, we need your spirit right now to open up our understanding individually and collectively what you would have us to know today in Jesus' name. Look upon Jesus. Look upon Jesus. John 1, verse 19, it says, Now, this is the testimony of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask them, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? What do you say about yourself? Verse 23, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now those who were sent were from the Pharisees. And they asked him, saying, Why then do you baptize 
if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor that prophet. Listen to what John said here. John answered and said, John answered them saying, I baptize you with water, but there stands one among you you do not know. It is he coming after me is preferred before me. Jesus has to be preferred before yourself. Amen. Whose strap sandals I am not worthy. I am not worthy to loose. None of us are worthy. We all have sinned come short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Verse 28. These things they done in Bethabara beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing and the Bible said, here it is, the next day, somebody say the next day, the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and he said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What do we know? Behold, John says, look, gaze, fix your eyes, make sure you are transfixed, that you'll have a narrow view of what you keep your focus on and who you keep your focus on. Look upon Jesus. Look upon Jesus. First of all, we learn John was one of the few or one of the first to, in the New Testament, to acknowledge Jesus as the Lamb. Behold, he said, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. What do we need to know? We need to understand that in order for people to be saved, in order for sin to be forgiven, blood had to be shed. Isn't that right? And, and the Bible began to teach the Israelites through the sanctuary services what this offering was all about. He began to teach them. And we find in the book of Genesis, what book did I say? Genesis chapter 3. Turn that with me. And verse 23, we see that Right after creation, we see how, how, how this thing began to unfold. Right after creation, in Genesis 3, you have Genesis 1, Genesis 2, creation. Genesis 3, the fall. Come on, somebody. The fall. And the Bible says, Genesis 3, verse 21, unto Adam also and to his wife, did the Lord make what? Coats of skin to do what? To clothe them. This is one of the early references letting us know that in order for Adam and Eve to be covered after sin came into the world, amen. Remember, initially, they tried to cover themselves. They tried to seek their own salvation. Amen. And ever since then, man outside of Christ have been trying to cover himself. Hallelujah. The Bible said they gathered fig leaves. Fig leaves to cover themselves. But God began to help them and to teach them know that, that fig leaves are not able to cover you. Because there had to be a, a sacrifice that had to be a uh, redemption, uh, uh, there had to be perpetuation for the sin of Adam and Eve. The Bible says, and when God came down, they hid, and they said, we hid because we were naked. They became self-conscious of their own nakedness, amen, and tried to hide it from God. How many of you know you can't hide nothing from God? So that the Bible says, and God called that, came down, and he made coats of skin. Skin means something had to be killed. Amen. 
And he said, in order for me to cover you, there had to be a sacrifice. Amen. And God made coats of skin. This is the first animal was, was killed to get the skin that God used to cover them. Amen. And then we go on down to Genesis 4. Turn that with me. Genesis 4, right in, in, the, in, in right after creation, after the fall, we see in Genesis 4. Look what happened. Genesis 4, verse 1. Now Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she began, bore again, and this time his brother, what's his name? Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of what? Sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, what happened? It came to pass that Cain brought an offering of what? The fruit of the ground. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. Amen. And the Lord, listen what it says, and the Lord did what? Respected who? Abel and his offering. So God had instructed them what would be necessary for as a proper offering. Amen. Now you have to read the 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 backstory to understand that the process had went on and Cain and both Abel knew what was the correct thing to bring. But Cain thought it was okay to bring of the fruit of the ground. What that tells us, brothers and sisters, that we can't determine on in our human mind what is truly acceptable to God. God tells us what he wants and what he demands. Amen. Because he's God all by himself. Now, the Bible says when they sinned, they became self-conscious and their thoughts flew to lust. That's what happened when uh, they ate the fruit and their eyes were open. Instead of looking at each other in, their, in the beauty of holiness, their, their sin entered with disobedience. Amen? And the Bible says their thoughts, and they became aware that the children they bore through their union would be infected with a sinful nature. They became aware of that. Not only did they sin, but sin became embedded in their DNA. And anytime they would have children, children would automatically. That's why they say you, you don't have to teach children wrong. Uh, <laughs> you have to teach it right. Hallelujah. Because they, they have something in them that bends them towards wrong. Hallelujah. So, 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 and so after they sinned, they made garments of fig leaves, but God said, that's just self-effort. You're trying to cover yourself. No. And the author Pink, who, who wrote a, a number of volumes, wrote this about the book of Genesis. Now, he says that, that this is the first gospel sermon preached by God, not in words, but in symbols in action. This incident that we're talking about, we learned four things about salvation from this verse. Number one, salvation is all of God. Salvation is what? All of God. It's not God plus, God minus. It's not us plus God. It's God all by himself. If we're going to be saved, it's because of the way Jesus came and paid the price for our sin. Amen. He was the lamb that took away the sin of the world. Number two, salvation is accomplished by the death of an innocent substitute. And that substitute was Jesus Christ. He loved us. God so loved the world that he gave what? His only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not what? Perish, 
but have. That means all of us sitting here today can be saved. It didn't say we will be. We can be if we accept what God has already provided. Here we go. How do we know God provided? Here we go. We're going to skip down to Genesis. Genesis chapter 22. I'm going to show you something. God had already provided the remedy for the situation. Amen. Genesis 22 and verse 8. Abraham tells us right here. Genesis 22 and verse 8. What does it say? And Abraham said, now you know the story, God had called Abraham to take his son up to the top of the mountain, the miracle child, the one that Abraham and Sarah had to wait over 30 years for. The one God gave when they were past childbearing age. The one they had waited on, prayed for, and finally came and, and one day God spoke to Abraham and said, I want you to take that boy now, take that son, take him up to the top of the mountain and there I want you to offer him as a sacrifice. That's the backstory of this text. Amen? God gave, told, told him to take this son now up to the mountain I was reading some interesting things back in, in about this backstory here because you know uh, child sacrifice was prohibited for the Jewish nations, for the Jews, for now many of the surrounding nations in an effort to appease their gods. Thank God we didn't have gods like that. In an effort to appease their God, they would offer their children as a sacrifice. See, and that's where that idea comes from. It was the Canaanites and all of these different uh, people that God kicked out of the land before he wanted his people into that land. And there's a, there's a, you know, when you read this story, you have to always be careful that you analyze because, because when I went back and read through that story again, I see how emphatic God was with the Israelites telling them, don't leave a soul alive. I want you to kill men, women, children. Don't leave any of them alive. And, 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 and don't, don't bring any of them with you. And I kept trying to wonder, why was God so you know, I mean, over and over, he would tell them, go in, and I want you to wipe it out. And in some of the cities, they were not allowed to even take the plunder. That was dedicated to God. They were not allowed to take. Now, now we see in this story what happened. Uh, we see that, that they, they, they continue to go, and, and, and God told them, here's why I don't want you to save anybody. Okay? Because if you do, they're going to become a part of you. Right? And sure enough, Israel's downfall was that as they inhabited the promised land, they left many of those people alive and they began to intermarry. And they've been fighting ever since. They're still fighting over there right now. <laughs> God knows what he's talking about. Amen. And the Bible says in Genesis 22, 8, the backstory. Now, here's the verse. Here's the key verse. When Abraham and, and his son were getting ready to go and, and Isaac said, Daddy, I see the wood. I see the fire. But where is the sacrifice? Where is the lamb? And here's what Abraham said right here. Here it is. Abraham said in verse 8. 22.8, my son, this is before they got up to the mountain, right? My son, God will what? Provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. Now think about that. Who had God asked for? 
to be the sacrifice. His son. So God is saying, God is telling uh, Abraham right here that, that I'm showing you how I'm going to bring salvation. I'm using you as a prototype to how I'm going to bring salvation to all mankind. Just like I'm asking you to give your son, I'm going to give my son. My God, my God, God will provide himself a lamb. So they went up together. And there we see the fulfillment of that text. Just as Abraham was getting ready to strike his son. Abraham getting ready to strike his son. And I believe, I believe that he possibly would have. You know why I believe that? Because when you read the New Testament and read in Hebrews, it says, it says that that Abraham reasoned that if God took him, I know he can raise him back up from the dead. So I believe he, I believe he would have, except God sent that angel to hold back his hand. To hold back his hand. And then we see what happened next. That's in Genesis 22. We're talking about look upon Jesus. Genesis 22, verse 13. Turn that with me right quick. Genesis 22, verse 13. It says, then right at that moment, what does it say? Abraham lifted his eyes and looked. And there behind him was what? A ram caught in a thicket by its horn. So Abraham took the ram and offered it for a what? A burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. God will provide for himself. The sacrifice. All of this symbolic back in the Old Testament was pointing to Jesus in the New Testament. Hallelujah. God was, God was using these episodes in the life of the nation to teach them about his son and his sacrifice. And so we see later on uh, in Exodus 12, we see we see that God tells them to take the blood of a lamb. And I'm going to give you some instructions as to what you need to do with the blood from these animals. Turn with me to Exodus 12. Exodus 12. Quickly, Exodus 12, verse 1. The Bible says, Exodus 12, verse 1. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be the be your beginning of months, and it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak, God says, to all the congregation of Israel, saying, on the 10th of this month, every man shall take for himself a what? A lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a what? A lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of persons, according to each man's need. You shall make account for the lamb. Here's it is. Again, God is teaching his people about his son. Okay. Verse five. The lamb you choose must be without what? Blemish must be without blemish and a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill 
that lamb at twilight. Listen to this. If we know how we know he's talking about Jesus. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they had eaten. And then flip to verse 13. Look upon Jesus. Exodus 12, verse 13. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, look upon Jesus. When I see the blood, what? I will pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. God, God, God is saying, not only I'm going to provide the land, God is saying, I'm, I'm going to be the lamb. The lamb had to be perfect, amen, without spot or without blemish. And then we, we find out later on in the Old Testament, as we prepare our hearts for communion, why am I talking about look for Jesus, look for Jesus? Because Jesus must be the bullseye. You look to a scope. You have a bullseye. Your, your attention and your focus in life must be on Jesus. Look upon Jesus. There's so many things that distract us away from Jesus. Okay? So, so God is saying to, to, the, to the nation, he's saying to us that this service that we partake of called communion, the Lord's Supper was instituted because we need to remember what God has done. He has provided himself a sacrifice. Amen. And we read in Isaiah, you know this text in Isaiah 53, that whole chapter is just powerful. Powerful. It identifies Jesus as the sacrifice. Amen. Where Isaiah says, um, talking about Jesus, he, he was despised and rejected. That's in Isaiah 53. He was, he was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hear that it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our what? Griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But listen, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to our own way, but the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. He opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, as sheep before his shears is silent. He opened not his mouth. Now you can see, now you can see why in John 129, go back there, John 129. It's what we started with. John the Baptist was telling the Israelite, I am not the one. I'm not the Messiah. See, that many of them thought John the Baptist was the coming Messiah. And they ran out to him. To, you know, he had large crowds of people. But he had to plainly let them understand, no, I'm not the one you should be looking to for salvation. I can baptize you with water. But there's one coming after me. Who not only going to baptize with water, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So, so John 
pointed them away from himself. And that's what we have to be willing to do. Don't point people to you. Point people to Jesus. Say, look upon Jesus. Sinless is he. Lord, impute his life unto me. My life of scarlet. His sin and woe. Covered with his life. Now whiter than snow. John 1, 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming to him, and he said, look. Look at that. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And that's what we want to focus you on right now. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Communion is just another opportunity. We, we say, we, we often say it's, it's like a mini baptism, uh, you know, because listen, I, I don't tell anybody, don't wait till communion to get right with God. Matter of fact, every day, every day when you when you get ready to go to bed, there's there's always something that you've done or you thought <laughs> or you thought to do or something that you didn't do. That you should have done. Sin of omission. Amen. God told you to go visit. God told you to witness to somebody. You, you omitted that. <laughs> you said, no, I'm not going to do that. So, so, so what am I saying? God saying every day we want to make sure we lay down. Like the old young, the, 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 the prayer that we used to teach the children. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake. <laughs> we, we were taught that as children, but we, we didn't, you know, we memorized it. But we, now we know that this is vital, that that we come to God every day. You know, the sacrificial system was a daily lesson study in the cost of sin. It, it, this is the, the, the tabernacle and the altar in those places. It was not a beautiful, saintly place on a daily basis. Blood was animals was killed every day they had to burn incense continually and that was the reminder to the people the cost of sin amen because god wanted it the world to know not only us but even the unfallen world god want them to know the end result of sin amen the end result of sin, alienation, separation from God. So we come today as we prepare our hearts for to partake of the beautiful commun communion service that Jesus instituted to help his disciples, and to help us as Christians, to remind us to keep our focus on Jesus. People come and go. Amen. Make sure your, your, your foundation is on the rock. Let me put it that way. Amen. The rock, Christ Jesus. Because storm's going to come. Wind's going to blow. Got to make sure your foundation is solid. Amen. Make sure there are no cracks in your foundation. Make sure there's no holes in your foundation. And we see even now as we prepare our hearts for the, the, the Lord's Supper to remind us once again to keep our focus on Jesus. Let us pray as we prepare our hearts for you. Father, we ask now that you would come ever nearer, nearer 
to our to thee right now as we pay our hearts for it. to participate in this ordinance that you have ordained for us you said to remind us to keep our focus in the right place that's going to so now lord be with us we pray in jesus name Amen. And so, as you know, we we uh, made adjustments to how we do communion and eliminated the passing out of the emblem separately. And I think uh, in most churches, that is the process that we did was was more more simple, so that we could be safe even while doing communion. And so today, we we passed out the emblems uh if there's anyone who does not have their package by them i'm going to ask you to raise your hand and we'll we should make sure you have it if you want to participate um make sure you have your materials that you're going to need to participate and then i'm going to ask as we prepare our hearts elder dunson is going to come and pray over the emblems and then we'll proceed with the service. Carefully consider what we have heard. Mm -hmm. And as we go to our Heavenly Father, understanding what Christ has done. Mm -hmm. As each and every one of us to evaluate our hearts right now. And Thanksgiving, let us go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you praise for what we've just heard through your word. We just went on a tour mm -hmm. from Genesis to the time where John said, Behold the Lamb of God. The message has been clear. We are to look upon Jesus. And so that's what we're longing to do right now as we partake of a service that he designed that we should do in remembrance of him while we're looking upon Jesus. So Father, we have just a symbol, precious body of your son that was broken on our behalf. And then we have the grape juice, which represents that precious, precious blood. Mm -hmm. We sing about it, all the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. that was shed on Calvary's cross. Oh, that they may fall on us right now and in each and every day of our lives. Father, help us not to take for granted. Let this not be just a form or a ceremony where we partake and then we go back to our lives as if it had no impact. But Father, what we're asking today that as we consider the word that we heard, as we think about what's in our hands and, and what we partake into our bodies, that the thought of your precious son, may it have an impression in our minds every day of our lives. Sacrifice that was made for us. And we lift your name and praise and thanksgiving for what you've done. So we ask that you will bless the symbols, knowing that there's no power in them. Yes, sir. But there is power in knowing what you have done. And so we huddle at the cross right now. Mm -hmm. It's all level at the cross, dear Father. There are no big eyes and there are no little U's. We're just all hanging around that cross, Lord, waiting for the power to come to us to change and to be removed from sin and live in the power of beauty and holiness as you have called us to as we await your return. So we thank you, Father for what you have done and what you're doing now, what you will do in the future. For you are truly the author and finisher of our faith. Mm. This is our prayer 
In Jesus' name, amen. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, it says this, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, take bread peace, and when he had given thanks, he break it and say, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us partake of it. And in the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us partake, careful with the it. Let us partake of the cup. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Now, based upon scripture god tells us that as often as we do this we remember him and what he has done for us you know we always say it's kids like having a new start uh, in our lives as we uh, but remember that we don't wait till communion to ask God, as soon as God brings to our remembrance things that we need to ask for forgiveness of, hey, don't let it pile up. Amen. Be like the Bible said, be quick to ask for forgiveness. And 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 here's the beautiful thing: God loves to forgive us when He when we come and ask Him. For his forgiveness. He already knows what we're doing anyway. It's more for us acknowledging our need of him. That we need the Lord on a daily basis. So give God praise. Give God a hand clap. Thank God for another holy communion service and another opportunity to break bread and fellowship with you all. Uh, and so God bless you. Uh, thank you so much for being here today in person. I'm going to ask Ella Dunson to come and give us our closing. Amen. Come on, say amen. Don't you feel good? Don't folk at home, I hope that you have that feeling too. We're clean right now. Amen. I don't know if you ever had an all-white suit before, but when you get that all-white suit, you don't want to go outside. You don't want to get in there mud, but that's all right. God has that crimson string that 
cleanse us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor, for leading us in this communion service today. I want to thank uh, Sister Betty Jones, our head deaconess, who prepared everything for us. And um, God has been good. Just before we depart, um, there has been a, a dinner prepared on behalf uh, for our pastor. Amen. We, we couldn't bring them in the way we wanted to because of all the restrictions. But uh, we wanted to uh, find a way to do it. And so we gave some time. So a meal has been prepared in his honor and Sister Boswell's honor. And we just want to let you know that that has taken place. That being said, we are concerned about social distance. And so it looks like we have enough here to uh, have proper seating. We, we love to do it the way we always done. We pack them up, line chairs around the wall. I miss those days. You remember Sister Cole's trip? Okay, let me stop. Went down memory lane. But she'll have that and we're on the line and we just had good times. But we want to try to get as close as that as we could. But there may be some who may not be able to stay or may not feel comfortable staying. And that's fine. We, we're prepared to have to go plates for you. We can be patient with our, our kitchen staff, uh, Sister Weston. And, Sister uh, Duncan are making preparations right now. And so we want to be mindful of that that is available for you. And if you're able to hang around, grab a seat, we long, long to love to fellowship with you today. Is that all right? Amen. Can we stand together and let's let's just give God's thanks one more time. And and I, I don't know, I'm going to slide a blessing for the grace over there. I think they may appreciate that. Um, so um, I want to close the service and then we'll have the blessing for the folks. Father God, it, it, it has been good being in your house today. And we want to thank you for that. Just studied your word. Word gives us hope. Help us to realize how much we need you. So Father, we feel good walking out those doors today. We want to take Jesus with us. Holy Spirit, help us, the Father. Help us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so that when he comes and when you see your children, you will recognize us by his character being stamped on our hearts. Now be with us as we depart from this place. Help us to share the light that you have given to us with others so that when we come back on next week or through the midweek recharge, that we will reconnect and pick up right where we left off. We know you can do that for us. We thank you for the victory we have in Jesus. Now keep us, we do pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And then we say, Father, thank you for the spiritual food we receive. Bless the physical food that has been made in love. May it nourish us and strengthen us, we pray. Amen. God bless you.